Okay, here we go on population growth curves. So population growth curves show the numbers of population. So up the side, you've got the number of whatever it is that you're measuring. And across the bottom, you've got time. So we're going to deal with uh, two scenarios really. So we're going to start off with number of cells. So here, if you sort of want to imagine what is going on, it would be like inoculating a flask with bacteria. So you've got your agar in there, you open it up and you stick one bacteria in. And 20 minutes later you've got two of them, 40 minutes later you've got four, then you've got eight, then you've got 16, then you've got uh, 32, because they double all the time. And eventually you, you know, leave it long enough and you'll have about eight million. So. If we're in that sort of closed system, so there's no immigration, there's no emigration, they can't get in or out, all they've got is the nutrients that they've got inside the flask, so you've got your nutrient agar in there. The population curve follows a pretty characteristic pattern. So it starts off quite slowly, it rises, it levels off and then it dips. So there are four distinct phases. One, two, three, four. So all we've got going on in here is cell production and cell death. So in the lag phase, because we're talking about unicellular organisms, so this phase, phase one, is called the lag phase. What they're doing there is they're synthesizing enzymes, Uh, they're replicating their DNA. If you're growing something like yeast and you've popped it in as a sort of, you know, one of those shaky cans of dried yeast, it might be that they're, you know, hydrating. We then go into phase two. Now this you will see called the log phase. I think that's a bit confusing because lag and log, A sounds similar, B if your A's and O's look a bit similar bit tricky to get the marks so I think you should really stick to exponential now obviously in here if you've got very few bacteria they've all got loads of nutrients so there are no limiting factors on growth nothing limiting how quickly they can reproduce and their numbers double per unit time. So if you've got, you know, your unit time might be 20 minutes, it might be an hour. If at one hour you've got 100, after two hours you're going to have 200. It's that simple a relationship. And obviously they're in a pretty enclosed system, so eventually these nutrients are going to start running out and Instead of the cell production rate exceeding the death rate, because obviously some of them still die when they're in here, they're not, you know, they're not immortal. Um, we go into a f the phase called the stationary phase, and in the stationary phase, the cell production. So they're reproducing and they're dying doing it at the same rate. So cell production equals death. Why do they start dying? So their, you know, their nutrients are limiting. So 
So they're starting to run out that increased competition for the available nutrients. And then as you can see, the population falls. Why does it fall? This is the death phase. So we've got cell death. bigger than production and here we could have toxins building up so if you think about yeast it will maybe start respiring anaerobically and producing alcohol which kills the cells so the toxins are building up and the nutrients are depleted Can't really see the bottom of that. Mm, let me just move it up a bit. There we go. Now you can see it temporarily until I move it again. So that's the situation for a closed system of unicellular organisms. We're pretty much talking microbial growth, which sort of follows on really nicely from um, the uh, work that we've just been doing on microbiology. We need to also consider what happens when we introduce a species into a larger environment. So here we're going to be talking about animals. I think I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go grey squirrels. There are lots of uh, introductions that you can look at, collared doves. So again, we've got number of population. And we've got time along the bottom. So uh, I'm going to look at grey squirrels. I can't remember when they were introduced, sometime in the 1800s I imagine. I think some Victorian guy brought them over because he thought they looked prettier than the reds and then that was that. <coughs> so if we look at the um, population growth curve for grey squirrels then. So this guy brings over a pair of grey squirrels, sticks them in his garden, uh, keeps looking out the window and thinking, oh, aren't they pretty? And they have their litter of babies and the population is still quite low. And then those babies have babies and so forth and so forth. And the population goes up and 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 up. Exponential. So here again, we've got that lag phase We've got the exponential phase, but then they're not in a closed system. So we're not going to get this stationary phase. What's going to happen is that as competition for the resources increases, the pot, some of those squirrels are going to die. They're going to you know, not be as reproductively successful until they get down below what the environment can sustain. And then the population is going to go up again and it's going to exceed what the environment can sustain and it's going to go down and up and down and it's going to fluctuate around a point called the carrying capacity. So the carrying capacity is really the maximum number of organisms that can survive in a given environment. So what we've got here causing the decrease is uh, competition. And usually when you're talking about competition, you need to say what it's for. So let's go food. And here we've got less competition because you've got less numbers. So they get more reproductively successful. And it kind of fluctuates around this sort of set point so we'll call that set point, so this is the number that can be carried in the environment. That is called the carrying capacity. Now for ease, in an exam, if you were asked for it, I would always 
choose that value, the top, the maximum number. And of course we need a nice um, definition of that. So, carrying capacity represents the maximum number of a population that can be maintained indefinitely. So, for example, I was watching a really interesting programme last night about Death Valley. Obviously, conditions are quite hostile in Death Valley. The daytime temperature reaches 54 degrees. Nighttime temperature is about 44. It's, all, it's quite a warm place. It doesn't have much rainfall, so it's very deserty. It's actually got the largest aquifer in America and underneath, which was really interesting. Um, but all through that programme, the, the guy kept saying, and um, what keeps the numbers, you know, there, there are only so many 300 coyotes over the whole of Death Valley, which is a massive, massive area. And those numbers are kept sm down, you know, at around 300, pretty stable, because the environment just can't sustain any more. There isn't enough food in the environment to sustain them. And the populations are low for all of the species in Death Valley and they're kept pretty constant because of this competition for food. So as soon as you've got one more coyote, there really isn't enough food. Something then dies. The population goes, as soon as it dips below that, then they can have, you know, more of the offspring survive and the population goes up. Increased competition, it goes down. That's sort of pretty much it. And of course, you've got other things going on like predators and we'll look at predator prey graphs maybe in the next video.